Alright guys, in this video, I'm going to start tearing down the mill. Here you see I'm taking a couple screwdrivers and trying to pry up the motor. Okay, I'm having a little difficulty with my getting the motor off. It seems to be frozen on there, so I put some uh, liquid wrench on there and I'm just going to let it sit overnight and see if it'll come off in the morning. Uh, put a wrap duct tape around here so that if I pry it off, it doesn't you know tip over and fall all over the place and on my foot or something um, I took the handle off here took the spindle out and be careful of this spring right here or the spring has a keyhole on it so to get the spring off so that it doesn't unravel on you there's a screw that's screwed into the shaft and the spring has a keyhole slot so just kind of turn it and get that off uh, and hopefully it won't unravel on him like it did me. Uh, you got to take the control panel off the side here. Uh, pretty straightforward. There's a screw here that actually keeps the spindle. Uh, it goes into a slot and it actually keeps the spindle inside the head here. So you have to back that out in order to remove the spindle. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, so I need to try to get all this off so I can take the motor, the, uh, the, uh, the gearbox, take all that off so I can work on the Z-axis and I just gotta grind this notch. Just gotta grind this notch, cut this notch out right here for the uh, Y-axis. So just kind of getting it all disassembled so that I can move forward. So. Um, not really exciting stuff so I didn't film much of it but I just wanted to kind of point out some of the um, some of the things uh, the shaft for the uh, down the quill it comes out this side but you have to pull in order to get the shaft out you have to pull this cover off right here for some reason I, I really couldn't figure that out but it wouldn't come out until I pulled that off so Make sure you take that off. It's just three screws holding that in. And uh, that's it. Let's go look at the spindle. Okay, so here's the spindle assembly. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, it does have taper roller bearings in here. I'm hoping it's fairly similar uh, dimensions to a uh, the 45 series mills or maybe the G0704 I'm not sure uh, there's a pin down inside there can't see on camera but there's a pin that you align the uh, tool holders with and uh, I think this little black ring right here unscrews to access the bottom pairings it looks like you're going to need some kind of special wrench, so we'll have to make something for that. And uh, just a spanner wrench right here. But yeah, I may take this apart and figure out what I'm going to need. Okay, well, as I mentioned before, my motor was kind of stuck. Uh, the shaft is a little corroded under there. And it's stuck on there but I got a trick that I'm going to use to get this off um, I started out by just taking some uh, pry bars and getting a gap underneath there prying it off is not really the safest and most effective way of getting it off because you get everything kind of crooked and it just messes up the bearings that are in there so what I did was I just screwed down a M8 screw here and put a nut on it and then screwed it into the top and now I'm just going to back this nut off and lift or press each one of these corners up and as I go around slowly pressing each corner up you can hear it creaking and popping and it'll lift the motor off uh, the shaft out of the uh, gearbox there. Um, 
So I'm going to just slowly crank on these. And get this lifted up. I happen to have some Allen head screws over here. I'm going to have to. Looks like I'm going to have to take them out and put in a hex head so I can actually get a wrench on the top. There's no access with this cover right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh all right. So all I did was run the screws through the holes there, and then screw the nut on and then screw each of the bolts into the top of the gearbox uh, where it was mounted before and then I just gradually worked my way around um, tightening up each nut and therefore lifting up the uh, motor plate and kind of pulling it out of the gearbox uh, you can see the duct tape is not level so you can see that I'm raising it up uh, this was the most effective way. I did have to pry it a little bit to get enough, about a quarter inch, so I could get the nut in there. I didn't want to do that, but that was the only thing I could do to um, try to pull this off. So, in the end, it turned out well. You can see, it worked pretty well, but it looks like I'm at the end of my bolt here so I'm going to have to manhandle it the rest of the way I guess it should be pretty much there see that I put the duct tape around here just as a safety just to kind of hold it there just in case all right let me see if I can get this off Alright, so I'm just pulling all the bolts back out um, so I can kind of lift it up the rest of the way. It's just barely still hanging in the gearbox. And I didn't know it at the time, but this duct tape really saved me, as you will see coming up in the uh, footage. duct tape. Don't try this without it. So it came right off after that. The shaft's a little... That's just the kind of the way they do. They get kind of stuck on there. Get this rusty cruddy stuff and, and after a while this gets gunky. And it's like glue. But uh... I'll clean that up before I put it back on there. Uh, probably use this motor temporarily until we get the belt drive situated. But she came off. There's a keyway down in there. And uh, all right, moving right along. One of the reasons I went with the Leeson IEC metric motor, number one, it's a one horsepower. I didn't want to go with anything uh, too big because I just didn't know what the volume was going to be sitting on top of the mill. So I thought for a first replacement motor, let's just start with this and we'll see what we got. Uh, another reason I went with this is I'm already familiar with it. It's the same motor that I put on the G0602. And I had a sneaky suspicion that it was going to be a direct replacement for the motor that originally came with the Precision Matthews. And after taking it all apart, I was exactly uh, right. The mounting plate bolts directly to the bottom of the IEC motor. The shaft length and size is exactly the same. So, technically, this is going to just slide right in the gearbox and bolt directly where the original motor bolted. So I can run this mill with Mach 3 using the gearbox. Now, this motor runs twice as fast as the original motor, so the speeds on this gearbox are rated at 1700. That's pushing this gearbox to 3600. Not sure how well it's going to hold up. 
Uh, so I'm still in the process of disassembling the whole meal and I've got to do this cutout, which is probably what I'll do after I get it all disassembled. I still want to take this head off so I can have access to the Z-mount. Got to take all that off so I can fit my stepper motor in there. Uh, it's going to go, well, you can't really see down in there. At any rate, I'm going to just proceed on. But I wanted to uh, stop at this point and note that the mount bolts right up. It's going to fit right in there. So that, that's pretty cool. Uh, for those that wanted to just add a three-phase conversion to the mill, get rid of the stock motor, add a VFD for uh, and a belt drive, or with the stock gearbox, this will slide right in. All right, so now that we got the motor off, I'm going to proceed with taking the gearbox off. There are three bolts holding the head on, and I'm using a number 10 can here, uh, and I've lowered the gearbox head onto the can to kind of support it, and took the nuts off, and it just slides right out. Uh, I'm going to take some measurements while I got it off there to uh, make an adapter. Um, the rest of this is pretty simple. There are three screws here, two holding on to the uh, slide there, and then one in the center that mounts to a uh, bracket attached to the lead screw. It's pretty, uh, it's not a tight fit, but it is a good fit in there, and it was a little difficult actually sliding that out. I'm not sure exactly why, but once I got it actually moving, uh, it did release and come right out, but I had to fuss with it for a little while. It helps to get everything kind of loosened up. This handle on the side here, it looks like they bondoed it in place, so I had to kind of chip away at the bondo there to get that out, but I was able to get it out finally and it all came apart. But it did turn out pretty good. Uh, you can see that it's just a pin that goes through there and then it hooks into this notch in the back right here and that's how it attaches to the lead screw. So I'm going to try to duplicate that with uh, my mount and that's why I left the uh, ball nut mount a little long. So go ahead and kind of just screw this off and it'll press that bearing as it comes off and then I just slid that out through the top. And uh, I just released the lock there, pulled out the uh, dovetail adjustment and uh, pulled it right off. The three bolts, they kind of slide around and then there's a hole at the top and you can just kind of slide them out the back. Now I can try to pry this handle off once I got that out. It took a little persuasion, but I finally was able to kind of break it free. Like I said before, it's just kind of bondoed in place. Not really sure why they do that, but that's the way it was. All right, well, looks like we've got it pretty much disassembled. Uh, and uh, next, we're going to cut our notch in our Y here. And uh, I'm going to just kind of clean up everything. And uh, then we'll start fitment. Guys, thanks for all your support. Please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, and leave comments. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe. Thumbs up if you like the video. And most importantly, be safe.